Okay. All right, there we go. We got it. So, hello, guys. Welcome. And I am the Philadelphia Whovian, and this is my very good friend, who's also a brilliant actor. Oh, thank yes, you. Yes, I got you an actor to do this reading this <laughs> time. I did. I did. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. So much, guys. Hello, guys. And so, welcome. And this is going to be a reading, actually, from a book that I just reviewed called Doctor Who, The Time Splicer, The Morning Star. And for this one, we're just going to be reading a conversation between the Tenth Doctor and Martha. The Jones. As you can imagine, he's going to be reading The Tenth Doctor, <laughs> and I'm going to be reading Martha Jones. And to give you some backstory before we begin our, you know, very interesting reading, let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, um, the, it could be some, like, you know, little moment before action. The, this, this reading, this excerpt we're reading, took place just after the end of the episode Human Nature, Family of Blood from Series 3. Martha is having a flashback where just after they left 1913 with Timothy, she and the Doctor entered the TARDIS. So it's a flashback, but it takes place right around that time when they just left 1913. So, you ready for this? All right. You ready for let's this? Let's do it. Let's okay. do this? Okay, let's do this. Okay, guys, well... Here we go. Let's let's see how this plays out for us both. Okay, so now again, Martha and the Doctor have just entered the TARDIS. Okay. Well now. The Doctor said, entering the TARDIS after they said goodbye to Timothy, having just defeated the family of blood. He shall really get a kick out of this. He's going to watch the TARDIS dematerialize, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> you can't help but show off, can you? Of course I can, Martha. <laughs> you know that I cannot. Martha smiled, happy that the doctor was pretending to not care that she had confessed that she loved him in the last night as John Smith. Now, it had been days, and she had been so scared to confront the matter, but when she did, it was quick, over and done with. Her excuse for telling him that she loved him was a lie, for it was not out of desperation to get him to change back, but because she just wanted to confess it to finally get it off her chest. But now, here they were, ready to pretend that it had never occurred. She could not fathom if that was a good thing or a bad thing. All that she could say is that it was the best that she could hope for. The TARDIS dematerialized and they went back into the vortex, leaving behind the terrible adventure that was quite the failure. The family of blood had caught up with them. They killed many people to get to the doctor. Innocent lives were lost and they would weigh on the doctor's conscience for days. Once again, he was responsible for the death of many and it was weighing on him. As he moved around the TARDIS, he was silent for a moment. Doctor, Martha began, noting his pained expression. Are you all right? Realizing that he must have looked quite depressed, the 10th Doctor pulled on the cavalier behavior and put on a mask of charming bravery. Uh, now, how about I take you to an ice hockey game that takes place around the moon of Kraxos? I'm sure that you'll like it. Hockey? Yes. Do you mean ice hockey in space? <laughs> yes, I truly did. <laughs> Ten, ma ten laughed, moving around the TARDIS with a forced energy. All I have to do is keep smiling. The doctor thought to himself. And if I do, she won't notice what I'm feeling right now. You know how humans are when they find a sport that unleashes all the inner aggression that your species have? They would stop at nothing to make sure it reaches the 15 corners of the galaxy. Hey, I like ice hockey too, all right? Now everyone does secretly, and some not so secretly. Oh yes, not so secretly. I once even got a team on my neighborhood together to play ice hockey one year. You did? Yeah, Tish and I were the team captains. No way, you and Tish? Me and Tish, yeah. We were rubbish at it, but we always watched it to get better. In England, I liked the Nottingham Panthers. In America, I liked the Pennsylvania Flyers team myself. Tish liked the Chicago Wolves. Wanna hear a secret? Oh, do tell. I had a soft spot for the Oklahoma City Barons and the Montreal Canadiens. I never heard of the Oklahoma City Barons. Oh, that's because it's the future for you. Uh, they won't get organized until 2010. Nice secret. She laughed, and happy to see that they were comfortable with each other, she was willing to agree to anything. Well, Martha said, you know what? I could go for a sports game right now. Uh, then how about another trip to Philadelphia? Mm? Uh, we could get dressed up and go see a play at the Wilma Theater, uh, the Walnut, or the Arden. Oh, uh, I believe I remember the year that they will perform Gem of the Ocean, and it is brilliant. Oh, I would love that. You're being strangely nice to me. Oh, come on. I'm always nice. <laughs> Are you? She laughed. But the question accidentally struck the doctor. 
Was he always nice? Perhaps not. Well, then I have another surprise for you. What? Come here. He said, offering her his hand. Martha removed her jacket and went over to him. So, she said, what are we about to do? Martha Jones, you're about to learn some basics on how to fly the TARDIS. Oh, no way. Oh, yes way. He then began to list some items on the console unit. As he did, he even gave her some pointers on how to do some actual flying in it, just in case they ever needed to fly it along the highway again. He didn't show her many things, and she could not fly alone at all, but it was just enough that she had a knowledge of what things were. Having fun? He asked her as they both sailed the TARDIS through the vortex. <laughs> yeah, she said. I'm afraid of putting a dent into the universe, but, but yeah, I'm good. Oh, uh, just remember, uh, don't pull the ner neutron transference lever to the left while you're pushing that red button, or uh, you will put a dent in 1969. The year that Neil, Am Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon? Uh, and the year of the Woodstock concert. Wait a minute. I heard that there were a couple of mishaps at the concert. Like, for example, Woodstock didn't even take place at Woodstock. And wasn't there this one band that never made it to the concert? The doctor looked very guilty. Oh my god, Martha realized. Doctor, seriously? Uh, it was an accident. Uh, uh, I accidentally fell on my console unit mid-flight, that's all. Uh, besides, Sullivan County was the best place for Woodstock to take place anyway, so you're welcome. And I do really feel bad that Iron Butterfly got stuck in the airport and therefore couldn't get to the festival by ground transport. Uh, I, I even sent a letter of apology to the front man of the band. You made a dent in 1969, so you're the reason that Woodstock didn't actually take place at Woodstock. Sullivan County was still better. All the people who played at Woodstock are now legends, so Iron Butterfly must really hate you. Yeah, they definitely got me removed from their friends list, which is sad because I loved going to their parties. Because of that one mishap in his past, the doctor gave her a few pointers on how to assist him in flying the TARDIS. Unfortunately, he never taught her how to be the sole pilot. So that was our very colorful reading of... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The, our colorful reading of the Tenth Doctor and Martha Jones. And from the book, Doctor Who, the Time Splicer, the Morning Star. Guys, I hope you enjoyed yourself. And I hope I can grab him again to do another reading. <laughs> All right. That's the... He said yes. You heard that. He, he said, <laughs> yes. said yes. He said yes. So, yeah. Hopefully you shall see him again. So, thank you so much, guys. And once again, I'm the Philadelphia Whovian, and this is my friend. Farewell. Bye, guys. Enjoy yourselves.